Hello. Nice to see you again. In this video, we'll try our toy design in Vector. Simple again? Yes, it's easy. This time, we're using the Shapes tool or Pen tool, as we've been using the Pencil tool a lot already. For those who don't have a drawing tablet, you can still draw. If you watch till the end, you will pick up some tricks and tips. Let's start with the head. Use the rounded rectangle tool to create the shape. Then modify it using the red points and the options in the context toolbar at the top. I won't draw by tracing, but I'll make it close to the original. Use the rounded rectangle tool again to create the skull's outline. Hold down Ctrl to duplicate or use Ctrl plus J, then move it to snap to the center of the head. There are two ways to combine shapes. The first way is to use the Add Boolean option. The second method is to use the Shape Builder tool. Set the action to add. Set the cleanup to internal curves, and uncheck the use style from first selected area option. This is because the fill and stroke color values between them might differ. Now, drag to add the areas you want. Look at this cartoon I example to see why use style from first selected area is different. The style fill color, stroke color of the first object you selected will be applied to the newly created area you're dragging over, essentially copying the style from the initial selection to the new area you're building. Create the glasses by using the donut tool to make the frame, or use the circle tool to create two overlapping circles. There are many ways to do it. and hold down the control key to duplicate it. Choose the color using the color picker in the color panel and drag it to the color you want. In version 2.6, this has been improved, and the color updates instantly, I love it. Then, click add to combine the pieces. For the lenses, I use the vector flood fill tool to fill the color. We use both fill and stroke colors together, so I won't go into too much detail. I recommend watching videos on the Affinity channel, which explain it far better than I do. I will only cover the basics of using the tools, giving beginners a general understanding first. Afterward, group everything by selecting all the shapes, right-clicking and selecting group, or use Ctrl plus G, or go to the layer menu then click group. Use the pen tool to draw the mouth. Hold down control key and move it a little down to the center. Group everything. Create the hat. Use the rounded rectangle tool again. For those without a drawing tablet, using the pen tool to create shapes is also a great option. Then gold down control key drag to extend the length of both sides. Use the rectangle tool. Convert to curve. Select the nodes you want, and use the corner tool to adjust the roundness. Add the hat band by clicking the insert inside the selection icon at the top and adding the hat band inside. Remember this method, as we will use it a lot. Once done, group it or not, it's up to you. But you should group it anyway. It will be easier to select and edit.
Now, let's move on to the body. No matter which shape tool you use, you always need to convert it to a curve before editing the node points. Hold down the control key to select the node points and make it a little wider. Click the transform mode icon and hold down control plus drag the bounding box to make it wider. The transform mode only affects the selected nodes. There's a trapezoid tool in the shapes tool too. Okay, keep going bit by bit until you finish everything. There's no fixed way to do it. It depends on how you apply it to make it easy and quick. Using basic shapes like squares, triangles, and circles is all about design. Choosing the right colors doesn't necessarily make it more delicate, it just takes more time to work on. Another trick when creating a shape, like a circle, is to hold down shift key to make it a perfect circle, and use the spacebar to move it. Or double click on any side of the bounding box to make it a perfect shape. The main steps are, create shape, convert to curve, and modify the shape using the node tool. This style doesn't take much to create, just some layering, blending shapes together, and placing objects right. Honestly, making this character isn't that hard. Just try messing around with the shapes tool. There's plenty to pick from. Most of the time, we start drawing by practicing realistic images, and having a reference really helps. Try using a simple cartoon style and follow along. Copy it and see if you can make it look like theirs. Copying to learn is totally fine, just don't use it for personal gain. That's what we call fair use. Alright. It might not look exactly like the original, but just make it look good to you. Now we're at the coloring step. The steps for coloring, adding shadows, highlights, and details are, select the shape you want, click the insert inside the selection icon at the top, draw shadows with a color or use the blend mode as multiply. Inserting anything into a shape is similar to the method of creating a clipping mask. We only use a few steps. Remember this method well, we use it a lot. I'll say it again. Do this for every part. You can also copy the multiply shadow style and paste style in the edit menu. Copying a style means copying everything including the fill color, stroke color, and even FX effects. If the shape area requires multiple shadow layers, group the shadows first and set the group's blend mode to multiply, then draw within that group. Okay, I'll suggest another method that's quite easy too. If your character has a lot of details, first, go to Auto Selection, and from the default setting, change it to Objects, select all the shapes and duplicate them. Add them together to combine as one. You know right? You gotta put it on top layer. Move it to the top of the layer, then turn off the fill and stroke. Merging into one piece like this gives you options for adding shadows, either make this layer a shadow or highlight on separate layers, or create a group inside this layer and draw shadows within that group instead. Pick the easiest way. It might seem a bit complicated, but once you understand it, it's pretty simple.
A trick for selecting shape objects. If you're using a tool other than the Move tool, hold down Ctrl and click to select curves or node points. To select a shape inside a group, double-click on that shape. Personally, I prefer the method of adding shadows to each part one by one. It's easier to control. So, let's simplify the process a little more. Go to the Styles panel, add a new Styles category. Name it. Draw the shadow. Change the blend mode to multiply. Then go back to the styles panel. Click add style from selection. Right click and name it. Do the same for highlights with overlay. You can apply different effects like Gaussian blur and save it as a style too. Start working on each shape part of the character. The simplest method I recommend is to draw the shadows and highlights first, then apply the saved styles from the styles panel. If you set the multiply mode every single time, it's too slow. When you use shadows with multiply or highlights with overlay like this. I've told you many times in each video that this method helps save time if you need to change the colors of the character later. Designing art toys means the colors will always change, so you won't have to redo the shadows or highlights every time you update the character's colors. I get it, everyone has different levels of skill. I'm trying my best to explain everything, but sometimes I might miss a step or two. Nowadays, there are so many apps that can help you work better, faster, and easier. This is just one way to do it. Try playing around with Affinity Designer, you might end up liking it. Just go with what feels right for you. Alright, that's it for this video, but we're not done yet. In part 2, I'll transform this character into a 3D style design in Affinity Designer. I'll try to make it as close to a 3D model as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part 2.